Um, so when we talk about collaborative workflows, uh, then um, that involves a repository on a Git repository hosting service, such as Jin, um, as we have just created for a very uh, convenient reason in most cases, that is being an access point for your collaborator. So um, when you have a collaborator that you want to um, work together with, then you can point them to a data set as long as it's not on your private computer because no one else has access to your private computer. So you put it on the web, on Jin, on GitHub, and you tell them the URL of that data set. And what the collaborator can then do is issue a data let clone command and uh, by these means obtain their own clone of that repository. And that enables these parallel workflows. So um, Michael and I were going, were going to do the collaboration session um, uh, yeah, interactively so that you can so that you can follow along. So let's pretend that Michael and I are going to, to collaborate. Um, and uh, one way to, um, to let him know uh, about um, my data set and also one way to, to collaborate without the necessity of making the data set public. So this is a, a, a way that you can use um, in case you, you just want to have a selected um, amount of, of collaborators is by um, simply adding your collaborator to your data set um, specifically. So I want, I want you to check out whom you're, you're paired with. And then um, I've written their um, usernames into the other pad. And then you each go into your data set, into the settings, and then to the tab collaboration. And then you can uh, search all registered users on Jin for that um, participant. So I could, for example, find Jialin uh, as a potential collaborator because she's registered there. But I'm going to do this collaboration with uh, Micha. So I'm typing in his uh, username and I can then uh, add him as a new collaborator and he will um, get an invitation. So that's that's one way in to, for you to, um, to, to add collaborators even in private repositories. Uh, I would ask everyone to quickly try if they can do this. I just got an email from Jean, and I also wanted to say that this uh, way of doing things is not specific to Jean. Uh, GitHub, GitLab, uh, other repository hosting services will have a similar workflow uh, where if you want to, you can add a collaborator that you that will have uh, access uh, to the repository very similar to yours. Yep, um, here is a screenshot on how that would look like if you were to to do it on on GitHub. It's a similar um, it is a similar web interface. Uh, if I were to add Michael there, I would need to know his GitHub user account. And there I can also give him right access um, to my data set. Um, if Michael adds me as well, then I can get also right access to his data set. I also got an email that I was added as a collaborator. So I just clicked on it. And now I have uh, right access uh, to Michael's data set. Uh, and he has right access to mine. And you should be able to have that for your assigned collaborator too. Okay, so in order to collaborate on a dataset that has been shared with you, um, what I will do as someone who, who is planning to contribute to Michael's repository is I'm going to clone it. This is the very first thing that I do. I'm not going to add it as a sibling to my existing dataset. Um, that would not be um, the, the right way to go, but I will take Michael's exact data set, which has, uh, even though they're similar in content, completely different um, revision histories. So um, what, 
I think I see a I see I see a quick question in the chat. How do you send the email for repo collab? Um, in your data set, go to settings. And then in the settings, go to collaboration and then add a new collaborator. So I can also go to, if you are registered, Leonardo, I, did, I think that's you, then I can add you. <laughs> and then you should have also uh, gotten an email. Um, yes. So with me being the collaborator who intends to contribute, I can copy that URL. It's an SSH URL. I'm taking the SSH URL specifically because I want to push stuff. I don't want to only consume. And I'm going to um, clone that under a specific name. So I say this is Michael's data set um, so that I have a new repository um, here on my computer that's called Michael's data set. Uh, and now I have I have his data set on my system. Um, you can see that I don't have all of the annexed files. The cloning was really fast, but there's no, none of the available content is there. I can data let, um, can data let get uh, any of the images that he has uh, created. Uh, in this case, you can see that it was done from origin. And you can also see, or let me show you with data led siblings, that the um, local data set that I have here uh, already uh, knows one sibling, and that is the location where I cloned it from, which is uh, Michael's data set. By default, this um, location has the name origin. This is a um, convention that you will see with any Git repository. It's something that is enshrined in Git something uh, some a name that you will also see uh often because it's it's standard practice so don't be confused if you ever see it um is that uh the repository that you are contributing to that is not yours uh is called upstream so many people rename that sibling from origin to upstream i can do this too i can say git remote rename origin upstream that will give it a new name. So if I do data like siblings, siblings, then it's called upstream. That's something that you don't need to do. And you can also rename it back. Um, but uh, in case you are collaborating on established projects or you see it in the wild in Stack Overflow posts, then uh, you are not confused. So yesterday, we already um, briefly um, talked about branching workflows. And that's something that is a complexity, but it's something that's also useful to avoid merge conflicts, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. So one thing that I would um, uh, ask you to do is uh, to adhere to a stereotypical branching workflow in the contribution that you're going to make on your collaborators, um, on your collaborators uh, repository. Uh, and um, you will be able to run a command that is called git branch to find out which branch you are currently on in your clone of your collaborators dataset. And that in this case here is called master. So to make my contribution, I will create a new branch in the extras, the basics of branching, you will see all of the relevant um, branching commands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new branch. I can do this with the git branch command and I can choose the name of my choice. Um, just for example, I'm just going to call this branch like my first name so that I can make sure that, you know, there's really no other name, um, no other conflicting branch. So now that I've created this branch, it exists as part of all of the branches that I have in my data set. But you can see with this little indication here that I'm still on the master branch. So in order to enter that branch, I'm going to check it out. And that means jumping from one branch to the other branch. So now I am on a branch, it's called Adina, and I can make 
any kind of addition, any kind of contribution um, that I uh, might feel like. Uh, so what I'm going to do is there is um, a little suggestion if you scroll down uh, in the section on remote collaboration to just add a couple more photos. And I'm going to just add some um, penguin photos to uh, Michael's repository. So I'm going to just also do a data let download URL command. Um, and uh, put a, another image into this data set. So I can now see that there's a different commit on my branch. And because I have right access to the data set that I was invited to collaborate on, I can um, push those changes uh, to the remote location. So um, one way I can do this is um, using data led push. And I'm going to specify which sibling to use. And you can see that it has pushed the new branch that I was currently on. Now, what you can see once you have done that, please let me know if I should stop for a minute or slow down. What you can see um, once you have pushed that is that this repository here has a new branch, the one that I've actually just pushed. And if I um, to check that branch out, that one would have the additional um, file. Uh, maybe, um, Micha, in case you want to maybe just repeat in case you haven't um, done a contribution, I could um, let you screen share. Okay, let's, let's do this. I'm cloning from, and it's, uh, it's important for me to clone from the git at gng.org, so for, from the SSH uh, URL that was shown here. I'm co I've copied it, uh, I've placed it here, and I'll call it Adina's dataset. I'm changing into this dataset, and uh, I am creating a new branch. I'm checking what branches already exist. Git branch, there are two. Git branch, and I'll call it uh, MSZ dash. New feature. And git checkout or git switch, uh, in this context, would we'll do the same. MSZ dash and F. It tells me I switched to branch MSZ and F. I now want to make some change. And in, in this case, it will be uh, it will be an addition. I want to say that I'll be adding this file. And my, I'll add it through the data download URL into inputs images king underscore zero one dot jpeg because it's a king penguin and the url uh, like this i probably don't need the quotes but just to be safe uh, there is there is a change If I look, uh, if I use stick to look what happened, I can see there's been things done by John Doe and the branch master is here. And I'm seeing on the top my most recent change. It's by me uh, and it's by, it's on MSZ dash and F branch. And it says downloads URL. I forgot to write a message. 
data lot push. So first of all, just to remind myself well where I can push data lot siblings. There's here and there's origin, and I want to push dash dash two origin. Uh, and it says transfer data, it says update availability, and it says publish OK. And somewhere in the publish OK, it says that there's a new branch. MSZNF went to origin MSZNF. So let's see. Uh, this is Adina's data set that I was adding to. If I refresh, it has the branch I created uh, and it in there the latest commit is done by me and i can see that inputs images really does have the image i've added also if i go back to my data set the one owned by me uh, i can also see that there is a, a branch that was added by adina and it has a, a commit i can view it uh, Inputs images king.jpg. Inputs images. Here I'm setting the branch I'm viewing, and there it is. And in order to integrate this commit, the addition of this new file or um, the additional change. Uh, I can create what is called a pull request. Um, the name is funny. Pull request arises from the underlying um, from the underlying Git commands that are essentially at work here. It is a request that comes from my new branch to the default branch of my collaborators repository, which is in this case the master branch to accept the changes from my branch into their branch. Um, so if I, uh, just, just as a reminder, so I was here in my collaborators data set and um, I clicked uh, way on top here onto the little um, thing pull requests um, and then the button new pull request. Then I can uh, select a, what is called a base branch. This is the branch that I want to propose to integrate changes into, that's master. And the comparison branch, that is the branch from which I want to include new changes into the default. Uh, once I've uh, selected those two branches, I see this neat little interface that allows me to create a title uh, and a quick human readable summary for my collaborator to better evaluate what I'm going to do. So I can explain myself, I can say, hey, this is my awesome contribution, this is what I'm doing, this is maybe why I have done something. Um, and you can also see a summary of the things that will be included in this pull request. You can see the commit, I again <laughs> forgot a uh, meaningful commit message, so it's not so, not so cool. Um, and you can see uh, here that it has added an annexed object. So I'm going to propose a title at a king. I think it's a kingfisher penguin, right? The king. I think these were gen to penguins, but let's oh, pretend. Gen to penguins to the data set. This could be interesting. For you in case you like penguins. And now once I create this pull request, um, it increases the little counter of pull requests on my um, collaborators uh, uh, data sets on Jin. Uh, and I'm stopped sharing to let Michael show you how it looks. Uh, from his perspective as the person receiving a pull request, receiving a request to integrate new changes into its default branch. Um, 
an email just popped into my inbox because uh, I have default notifications from Jin. But even if it hadn't, uh, if I went to uh, my data set, I would see the number one at pull requests. So uh, I would go to check this out. And I see there is one pull request open that has a title that Adina just typed and I know who made it. And I can go in here, see the description. Uh, I can see the list of commits that belong to this pull request. This is a single commit that downloaded URLs. I can see the files that were changed. Uh, and I can view the file that changed. Uh, Jin has no problems jumping from uh, showing, showing me the annexed content. Uh, so I can inspect what happened and I can see if, if, that, if that's something I want to integrate, if that's something I want to talk about a little bit more uh, or not. Uh, at this point, I am happy and I want to make this image part of my master branch. In this case, uh, I already have uh, what's needed at, at my at my disposal, I have a button. That I have an information that this pull request can be merged automatically, which says there are no conflicts. So for example, there isn't already a file of that name, or if it was a text file, we didn't change the same bit of the file uh, and such, or we don't have uh, problems uh, matching histories between the master branch and the, uh, and the Adina branch. Uh, and I can also make a, make a description, uh, give here a description of what I'm actually, uh, or what I'm doing in this merge commit. We'll, we'll see what merge commit means in a second. I can also here uh, uh, expand the discussion. So, uh, so let's say, thanks a lot, I'll, Merge it. I'm writing a comment. This is here recorded. Uh, and now I can make it part of the master branch. Do I need to write the description myself or? You don't need to. It will, it will create an automatic message. But you can. OK, so uh, add an image. By merging, and I'm clicking the green inviting button merge pull request. What happens here? The pull request status uh, has been changed to merged. I also have a button to delete this branch. I'll keep it uh, as it is, but uh, in a way it has served its purpose. Uh, and if I go back to the files preview, uh, I can see that in the inputs images, even when I'm looking at the branch master, I have the new file. Uh, but what's uh, worth seeing is that if I go to commits here, I can see the history goes as follows, going from the bottom. This is, this is me building up the data set. Then there is the commit that was proposed by Adina that added the file. And there is one more commit done by me that says merge branch Adina of MS that my data set into master. So here, this single commit is, is all commits that were on the, on the feature branch, so to speak. Uh, and my, me integrating it with the, with the master branch uh, adds another commit on top. Uh, it could, for example, also resolve any conflicts that uh, that uh, that arise. In this case, uh, it just says yes. This was added here. So the one thing that we have achieved now is um, we we have had a change from our collaborators um, uh, repository. So Michael added a local commit, or I added a local commit. In this case, I'm the collaborator. I added a commit 
And I created this pull request that uh, was accepted and thus merged into the upstreams repository, the repository on Jin um, main um, development history, the master branch. But the person that I'm collaborating with still has a local data set that does not yet automatically have this addition in their data set. So while the sibling data set on Jin has progressed its master branch a little bit, this update of the sibling has not yet been integrated into Michael's local repository. And for him to bring his local repository, his local data set um, up to date with the sibling on Jin, he needs to uh, update this. Uh, and there are several ways to do it. And on this slide, this is the just git uh, command to do it, but you can also do it with data lot. And um, maybe Michael would uh, be up for um, sharing that. Okay, so going back to, uh, to my side, I have, um, wait, I, Okay, going back to my side, uh, I have already handled the gene. So the pull request is merged. The commits show in the history and the files are where they should be. But if I go back to my data set uh, on, on the hub, so my local data set, my data set, uh, a quick look at tick shows me that uh, I'm a bit behind at this point. Uh, and I want to bring my copy in sync with the Jin sibling. So uh, the, uh, the sibling is called Jin. So I want to data lot update. And then I need to say where I'm updating from. So it's dash s, as for sibling. Jin, and there's also a parameter called how, and I say merge. And this tells uh, Datalot to use some strategy in case that integrating things uh, turns out to be a bit more complex. Uh, the merge is can be seen as the default option here, but I'll be explicit about it. Uh, so Datalot update dash s Jin dash dash how merge. And it says fetching updates, it says doing things. Most importantly, it says update OK. If I go to TIG to see what has changed, I can see there's a commit by John Doe that says uh, download URLs. Yeah, I can also see this little detour here. So there's a graphical history of my data set that it got branched at this point, the branch has so one commit by John Doe, uh, and this commit has been merged into the main branch by myself. And uh, just to uh, just to make sure everything's fine, I can use my file browser to see that. Well, the 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 file does not open. The pull was quick. I know that I know the file is there, but to have it have the file content locally. I can do data lot get inputs images king.jpg. Now it's getting the file content and now it's able to open. So I I have everything locally, both the history, the the file information and the file content as well. So there was a very valid question yesterday on what would happen if I were to um, propose a change or to make a change that would conflict with something that is already a part of the branch that I want to integrate it in or two contributors have made in addition to the very same line of text in a 
and a text file. So what um, this is called um, is a merge conflict. And if I would do a data let update or a git pull of the branch that contains the conflicting change, then I would see um, this message here uh, that boils down to, uh, I have a merge conflict in the following files. The automatic merge failed. So uh, the pull request that uh, Michael just merged would not display the message can be merged automatically, but would, it would say if you do it in the web interface, oh God, I have, I have a problem, I have a conflict. You need to fix those conflicts and then you need to commit whatever is done. This would, for example, happen if Michael were to add a King JPEG to his local repository before running data let update to pull the change of me adding the King JPEG to his repository upstream that would cause a conflict. And a merge conflict is Git's way of saying, I don't know which of the two changes I have to integrate here is the one I need to keep. Uh, there are two humans involved here. Each of them made a change. Each of them probably thought that change is worthwhile. <laughs> and I'm just a machine. I don't know what to do. Please help me. So uh, merge conflict sounds always a little bit scary, but it's something that um, is actually resolved uh, fairly okayish in most cases. The one and uh, really important a command that you can rely on to help you um, when you uh, get stuck in a merge conflict is called git status. The git status is a command that you already um, uh, see me use. I, I use it pretty frequently. Um, it's also in this case git status, not data let status that, um, that gives you the tips. Um, but it is essentially a guide um, to resolve a merge conflict. And uh, you just need to read the contents of the um, status report that it gives you in order to find out what to do next. So when you run git status and you're all in a merge conflict, then it will say, you have unmerged paths, which translates to, help me, I'm in a merge conflict. And then it will tell you a really important uh, command, which is git merge dash dash abort which is the emergency abort method to, if you really don't know what to do, uh, to just drop everything and go back to before the merge so that you know, you're know you safe, There's, uh, you, can, you can still get a coffee uh, before that merge conflict is due. Um, the uh, information on um, use git add file to mark resolution is a hint on what your next step is to resolve the merge conflict. And the uh, modification here, so uh, it is called both modified because though this is a file that was modified by both collaborators on both branches, um, that is an indication of which files to look at. Um, when you, the next thing that you do when you are in a merge conflict, you check out the file that contains the uh, conflicting changes. You can do this in an editor of your choice. Um, you can use a tool like git diff that shows you in the case of content that is committed to git the exact difference that uh, exists. And then it looks a little bit weird because git adds markup to guide you through the, through the, um, through the conflict and where it, it has arisen. So there are two um, different uh, markups. One is this uh, this arrow here uh, until the equal signs, and the other one is the equal signs until this other arrow here. So we have two different um, parts of this file. This is the one part, and this is the other part. Each of those parts belongs to one of the changes. So what you can see here is um, that the commit with this identifier here has made the change fixed path, so the literal addition to this uh, toy example file um, uh, pre-proc as age. And this identifier here had, that means the most recent commit of yourself, the one who's currently trying to resolve the merge conflict is 
uh, that there's this content here in the very same place that your collaborator wanted to add this line to. And your um, obligation as the sentient hum human in this uh, conflict for the machine is to decide which of the modifications, if any, to keep. And you are completely free in what you are going to do next. So what you could do is you can delete all of the contents of the file. <laughs> that would be fine with Git. It would just say, okay, all right, I'm going to commit it. You can also um, remove the addition that um, your collaborator made in that commit. You can say, oh no, that's that's completely bullshit. It's no, we, we don't want to keep this. Or you can say, hey, that that is actually the right thing to do. I'm going to remove some parameter tweaks that that I made instead, or you can keep both of them. So uh, it obviously depends a little bit on the file that you're dealing with, um, but uh, you can essentially just rearrange the contents in the way that you think this file should look like. And if it's your file that the merge conflict is in, you also know, you know um, what the contents should should kind of be. If it's if it's a Python script, if it's a MATLAB script, if it's an R script, then you know how a function needs to be written. So you, you can kind of judge um, what, what needs to be done. And once um, you have um, you have uh, decided on what to keep, you uh, delete uh, or keep whatever you want. And then you remove this marker. You remove the line that starts with those arrows. That you remove the line that starts with these arrows and the line that is the equal sign line. And uh, then you run what git status had told you before, git add, and then git commit. And then it will create the merge commit that has been created, for example, when you proposed a PR and that PR was merged. Um, so that's it. That was a very quick rundown on what the merge conflict was and how to resolve it. It's not so um, collaborative, it's not so hands-on, but if you ever come uh, into, the, into the position of needing to resolve the merge conflict, then I hope that has given you kind of an idea of um, what, what is needed to be done.